Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon on this wonderful Thursday afternoon. Although the sun isn't shining, but still it's a blessed Thursday afternoon. I am Portia Wheatley. I am the founder and the president of a nonprofit organization acknowledged as Trophy of Life Incorporated, where we have the great opportunity, the privilege, and the God assignment to render hope, encouragement, and inspiration to you, our audience, around the whole world wide world. On this platform, it's acknowledged as Project 365, <laughs> and we give God praise. And matter of fact, today is number 266. Oh my God, he's doing it. He's doing it. He's doing it. Well, I'm going to bring in my co-host, and she is going to introduce herself as well as introduce our guests and take it from there. All right. Well, hello everyone. My name is Takira Swan and I am so happy to be here with you today. Before I bring on my most amazing guest here, I just want to remind our viewers to please go to our YouTube page, like, share, subscribe, so that you can bring hope, encouragement, and inspiration to the entire world with us. We need you on our team. Now, for our guest today, Ms. Casey Wood, I am so happy to have her on our platform. She has something good in store for you. I've known Casey for quite some time now, and I can say throughout all the years that I've known her, she has remained exactly the same in a good way. She's so smart, she's genuine, she's kind, very creative, very funny, on the low, don't let her fool you. And I'm just so happy she's taking the time out to share with us today. Hey, Casey. Yeah, hello, ladies. It's I am thoroughly grateful to be on this platform today, albeit I don't really like talking to people, but <laughs> I always am willing to share the good news of Jesus Christ with all those around individually. <laughs> but, you know, we're all in stages of growth. So I'm very appreciative for this platform because like Elder Wheatley says, it's been 265 days. That is the most consistent thing that has been this year. The most consistent. Uh, all the ups and downs that have gone through this year so far, 365 has been the most consistent thing. And I am so grateful. And Elder Wheatley and Takira have been so diligent in this effort. May God's blessings be continuously upon them. Um, I just wanted to share a couple things with you. Um, I think my favorite thing to say in life is life is full of challenges. And that's not being negative at all. It's the acknowledgement of reality. Uh, the reality of the matter is we all deal with, as my archbishop would say, the vicissitudes of life. Um, there are always complexities in our life that causes us to go one way or another. But it's imperative that we understand how to deal with those complexities. When I got saved, I got saved when I was 12 years old. Now I'm over 40, close to 50. Um, and I know I don't look it right. So. <laughs> I know. Um, but when I got saved, I, honestly, I got saved on the premise of things being better in my life. The, the introduction to Christ to me was, if you accept Jesus, he will make your life better. And I was like, I'm all for it because I had a lot of issues when I was younger. And um, I was like, yeah, let's go for it, go for it. So went to church and it seemed like shortly after that, things didn't get better. They got worse. And that was a problem for me. And I was just like, this don't make no sense to me because I was told that things would be good. They seem to be getting worse. And what is this? So 
my pursuit in life became what I call the why of God. <laughs> like, why is this happening? What is going on? What did I do wrong? What can I do to make this better? So inevitably, we, we you know we traverse through life, we go through different things, we have ups and downs. And one day with my questioning of God, it was this movie called The Apostle. And this, don't ask me why this particular part stuck with me, but it did. Now the movie was not horrible, but it was about a preacher who was not a very good person, but he was a good preacher. And what stuck out to me the most was this preacher beseeched God about his issues constantly. He constantly did them, but he constantly beseeched God about his issues. And when he did, <clears throat> he said he it was this one particular scene where he's standing in a room and he's looking up to heaven and he's like, God, what is the problem? You call me Sonny, I call you Jesus. Like we have relationship, we have a connection. So why is all of this stuff still lingering in my life? Again, the dealings of why. So I'm gonna get to the point in a second. <laughs> um, I'm just kind of giving you some frameworks around some of the premises that I've come to grasp. And as I've grown and matured in the things of God, I've come to understand why David was a man after God's heart and why this man in this movie was persistent in beseeching God, even in his issues. And that's one of the things that the Lord said to me was, <clears throat> we always focus about Jesus being in the garden and Jesus in the garden, he cried out to the Lord and asked the Lord to let this cup pass. Now we kind of brush over the let this cup pass, but the Holy Spirit had me to key in on that as that being the why. Why do I have to do this? Why do I, why do I have to deal with this? Why can't someone else take this issue away from me? And the Lord said to me, you can have your moment of questioning, of wondering, of misunderstanding, of trying to figure things out, but you need to know, or you need to know to whom to have those questions to. Even as Jesus said, Lord, let this cup pass from me, his verbiage after that was nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And as Jesus shared his woes is what I call with the Lord, he caused his heart to be at peace with what was going on. Now you say, well, Casey, you don't know what's going on in my life. And the truth of the matter is, I really don't need to know what's going on in your life. The, the results to deal with complexities is the same. We need to go to our father so that he can give us peace. Now the Lord said to me that my life was designed for me to trust him. So everything in my life, God designed for me to rely on him. So even as David was a man after God's heart, we need to become people after God's heart by constantly connecting with the father in our complexities. Now, <clears throat> that understanding helped me a lot because it helped answer a part of the why. And as I grew and matured, the Holy Spirit shared things like nothing in your life is haphazard. You just have to seek me for its purpose. So that helped me again, because again, I have a why, like nothing. So, so God, what happened in my life is not haphazard. You, you foreknew it. You know what's going on. You have the ins and outs, you know, the ups and downs. So what am I supposed to get from this situation? And what is this purpose? So in me seeking and worshiping the father, he gives us the peace, the awareness, the understanding of the reasoning for this instance. Prime example, I, um, I got my master's degree in graphic design, my work computer, <laughs> got my degree in mas master's degree in graphic design. I ended up working at a career school, <clears throat> hated it by all means, you know, just hated it. And opportunity afforded itself at um, where I'm currently working at now, but it was a like a $15,000 decrease in pay. So I just bought a house. 
<laughs> and um, now a job is offered that will be in my chosen profession for $15,000 less than what I currently make. So I'm like, oh Lord, wow. So I was like trying to get all types of information and you know, people was like, that doesn't make any sense, Casey. That's just, that's just, no, you just bought a house. Like all of the logical reasons and rationales for not taking the position. And in the meantime, another position for a little bit more than what I was making came up. And I was like, Lord, I need to acknowledge you in all my ways so you can direct my path. And I was like, I just don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. So again, I'm praying, I'm worshiping, I'm trying to hear God and nothing. So I'm talking to people and it was like, girl, take the money, take the money. And the Holy Spirit said to me, don't take the money. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. I just bought a house. I just bought a house. So I took the job for lesser money and was depressed. Cause I was like, like, oh my God, like, what did I just do? I know I messed up. I know I messed up. I know I messed up. And the Holy Spirit said, stay the course. I was like, stay the course. Do you not realize what $15,000 is from what I was making? Like, sir. So he said, stay the course. And I would go, him and I would go back and forth on this issue like many a days. So then I, I, I came to peace with it. And when I got to the job, I ended up not even doing graphic design. And I was like, I knew it. I knew I messed this up. This was not God. I did not listen to the Holy Spirit. Oh my God. And he said, pride cometh before the fall. And I was like, I'm not prideful. I just took a job, like less than what I was making. And you're going to call me prideful? Like, Lord, really? And he said to me again, stay the course. <sighs> and I was like, depressed because I was like, I have a master's degree to go take notes from a meeting. That made absolutely no sense to me. I was like, who does this? Like, I leave a job, I hate it, but I made more money to come to a job where I'm not even being utilized for what I was supposed to be utilized for. And the Holy Spirit is telling me to stay the course. And I am perplexed, perplexed. I'm, I'm about to round this up. <laughs> and I go through the process every day, angry with God. And he said to me, say the Lord's prayer. So every morning I would say the Lord's prayer. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Money just started coming to me. And I was like, okay, okay. I give up, I surrender. I agree with you and, and more complexities came. More complexities, more complexities. And I'm like, if it ain't one thing, it's 12 others. If it ain't 12 others, it's 12 more. If it's two steps forward, it's three steps back. And these are the conversations that I'm having with God, not, not just Casey venting to her friends. Like most of my friends didn't even know. So. I was having these conversations with the father, like, hey, what's up with that? Like, this is what you told me to do. <laughs> this is where you, you said you led me to, but it's a lot more complexity. And um, Bishop Dennis, um, I can't remember the, the message, but it was like, the, the end result was open doors with adversaries. And I was like, listen, I've had enough adversaries in my life. I'm tired. Look, Lord, I'm tired of this. So again, I'm having these conversations with the Lord, not with a whole bunch of people to give me input on my situation. And when I tell you that as I stayed the course, the favor of God followed me, it followed me
<laughs> Immeasurably. Immeasurably to the point where I was able to pay off my student loans. I paid off my student loans. I paid off my car. I paid off all my credit card bills. And I tell you, the favor of God from being obedient and even in the places that I was totally obscure, I call it obscured obedience because I had no idea what was going on in front of me, but God knew. And when he said that my life was designed to trust him, he absolutely meant that. Every situation that we deal with, good, bad, indifferent, it's all designed to get you to the place where you are dependent on God. It, it may be ugly places, just like this ugly cry. It may be ugly places that you are in. It may be sin that you can't get around, but that is designed for God to produce out of you what needs to be produced. And I can say now that when situations come up, because truth of the matter is, a basement got flooded just a few minutes ago. And I was like, okay. Before it would have been like, oh my God, I can't do this. This is one more thing. But now I understand that God designs complexities for me to depend on him. The Holy Spirit gives us insight, wisdom, and strategies in situations that we need, but we are too overwhelmed with the situation. And that is why we need to in, implore ourselves to get into God's presence, to seek his face, to ask him the hard questions, because he is the one who has the correct answer. Like I said, I mean, you know, my friends know some of it because I share some of it with some of them, but like the heartfelt issues that I dealt with, I didn't share a whole lot. Like, because when you're overwhelmed with circumstances, you cannot see your way out and you cannot determine what information is good information and what information is bad. So that's why you need to be singled in your vision and to hear your God. And whatever he told you last is what you need to continue on until he tells you something different. And we, we have a tendency when the complexities of life come up is to throw our hands up and say, I miss God. And the Holy Spirit said to me today, he said, I will lead you and guide you into all truth. That truth did not mean good, bad, or indifferent. It means the truth, the moment, the matter that you need to be dealing with at this time. It seems like whenever we get into things that are bad or situations that don't go the right way, or we thought that it's, we miss God, but that's not the case. Because even the instance where I said, where the Holy Spirit said to me, nothing in your life is haphazard. Just, you know, understand the purpose that's going on. That was a complexing situation that he told that to me in. And I thought that that situation was gonna turn out to be good. But in a matter of good, it was because it taught me a lot of things about life and how to manage circumstances, how to deal with your emotions, how to manage your own emotions. Because when you're going through, the enemy attacks you in your emotions so that you become overwhelmed and you can't hear God. But when we become singular and focused and say, Lord, what is this? Help me to understand what's going on and allow his peace to rest in our heart then he can give us the insight and wisdoms to do what? Stay the course. Because when we stay the course, we walk right into that which he has purposed for us. <laughs> now, the house that I lived in um, was in Harford County. And I have, and I was like, you know, I had a, took a job that was in Woodlawn that was 45 minute drive at best, 45 minutes, say to an hour. And I was like, I can't, can't do that drive. So I needed to find a house that was closer to work. 
my mother currently lives with me. So it was like, I needed, you know, enough space mentally, physically, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> For all of us to have our own space. And, you know, she had her own requirements and I had some of my own requirements and we were looking for a house for a whole year, driving up and down the highway, back and forth. And I, I said, Lord, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of, I'm, I'm physically tired of it. I physically can't maintain this. I'm just, I'm just going to stay where I am and just deal with it. And he said, stay the course. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm tired of, I'm just, it's just, oh, it's just too much. Like, oh, I'm just overwhelmed with stuff. And you may say, if you ever bought a house, or looking for a house, looking for an apartment, you know it's not the easiest thing to do because you have expectations based upon which pictures you're looking at and then you actually see it and it's like, this is a mess. So it's like a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of research going back and forth, you know, going in and out, getting rejected when your offer's not going through and you're expecting this, that, and the other. And it's like, you're adding this money and it's like money, 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 and money, 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 and there's more money, money, money. And it's like, Lord, I don't have no money. <laughs> it's like, where's this money coming from? But so I went to this one house and I said to God, I said, you know what? I said, I'm done. I said, after I go look at this house, I'm finished. I'm over it. And he kept saying to me, and I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to go look. I, I'm just, I'm just tired because I'm just over it. And he said, stay the course. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to just go look at this house and be done with it. Cause it's going to be just like the rest of them. They just going to reject me because somebody else put in a higher bid or had some different things that I can't, you know, manage or whatever. So when I went to the house, I didn't have any expectations because I was what? Done and over it. But I, well, let me say this. Before I had put um, bids on other houses and I just was like, mm, no, it's okay. Let's see what happens type of deal. And one house was looked at, I looked at was prior to even went to market. And it was like, well, you can get this house. You wouldn't have to go through all of these issues or, you know, go through the whole bidding war. It will be your house if, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I looked at the house. It was a nice house, but I just didn't feel the absolute let go. It, it met all my financial requirements that I could manage, but I didn't, I just couldn't get the, the settlement. And driving up the road, my mother was like, well, what do you feel? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So I was talking to my realtor and she was like, well, they're accepting your offer, blah, blah, blah. You just need to give the go. And I was like, okay, let's go. And when I said, let's go, I was laying on the sofa watching TV and I was tossing back and forth, back and forth, my back and forth. My mother said, call the people and tell them you don't want it. And I was like, first off, why are you yelling at me? <laughs> like, but, and I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So she was like, Casey, you're restless. So let it go. I said, you're right. So I let it go. And when I let it go, there was a, another door that opened to the house that I'm currently in. <laughs> and when I came to this house, I was like, whatever, it's nice. That's cool. You know, yeah. Put the paperwork in, see what happened. This was a Thursday. How ironic. <laughs> Thursday, I came to see it. I left, went home. On my way home, she says, congratulations, you're a new homeowner. Wow. And when I was like stunned, I was like, wow. And the way things rolled down was clear direction from God because I was not into it at all. <laughs> I was like opposed to it for some reason. But when God orders our steps, it's not necessarily for what we call good. It's for his perfect will. As long as we stay the course and have our ear attentive to his voice, he guides us to the areas that he wants us to be facilitated in, to help us to grow, to develop, to nourish us, to encourage us, to encourage others. So now that I've walked through life, and I have lots of things that I've walked through life with, I can say to other people, just stay the course. 
see it to the end and let, allow God to give you insight and direction about what you need to do. Oh. So there you have it. As my granddaughter would, would say, that is so much good. That was <laughs> so much good, grandma. I tell you what, thank you so very much. And it's good when you can go through that experience and you can really speak on the topic. I oftentimes say, it's good to have the head knowledge. That's great. But when you've gone through that experience and you can tell someone, stay the course because I've stayed the course and God did just what he promised he would do. All the And then man could not get the praise for it. And all we need to do is turn every step that God allowed us to see and experience, we just turn around and give him the praise for it and the glory for it. I love it when you said, let me see, I jotted it down. Single in vision, yeah, we become overwhelmed with so many different circumstances and situations. And then we get stressed. We get uh, snappy at others. We're snapping at other people when we don't even want to do it. Right. And it, it bothers our mental status and it bothers our mental state of mind. But when we turn all of that aside and focus on the Lord, and allow him to redirect our focus from looking out and look within. Yeah. And he's already given us what we need. The other thing you said, I think he, uh, Bishop Dennis has said it as well. When you don't know what to do, go back to the last thing that he told you to do. Yeah. Keep following that and he'll give you the answer for the next direction. Awesome. Awesome. We just, we get overwhelmed with overwhelming, being overwhelmed. And I just, I remember in school, one of the biggest pieces of advice that I translated into my life was my teacher said to me, you need to learn how to edit yourself. And I was like, edit myself. He was like, because we can, we can start doing things just because we think we can. And we start doing stuff and doing stuff and doing stuff. And it's, and it's like, we over we become overwhelmed to try to get what get a, a piece that we want from a situation instead of saying God what what are we doing here like this all you homie so what you doing what what are we doing here and he will give you the exact words to say oh one other thing I wanted to say in the middle of what I forgot to say and I know we're almost out of time when I had submitted to the, to the fact that I was overqualified for the position that I had taken, the Lord, because I, became, I stayed humble with it, I completed it with the same amount of excellence that I would do with everything else. The Lord opened doors for me to manage projects. And this happened real easy because I was, I was in a meeting with one of the directors and they were talking back and forth and I was taking the notes and I was just doing such and such. And they were like, well, we need to figure out what um, such and such and such is. And I said, that's so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. She was like, what? You know about this stuff? I said, yeah. She said, we need her on every project. And from that, I've managed billion dollar projects as a contractor who was not supposed to manage projects. So that's how God's favor worked. It does work if you allow him to do it. And let me put a plug in here. Casey Wood does all of Trophy of Life's graphics work and you've seen it and it's nice and it's presentable and it's beautiful. And I get so many compliments on it. And I, I'm grateful. We don't put out anything. We only put it out, uh, it's put out excellence. And that excellence comes from Casey Wood. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. I am so happy for you, Casey. You know this. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing uh, with us about staying the course. And our, if our viewers can just remember to so listen, let go, and stay the course. I'm telling you, blessings. It's a t-shirt. Yeah, it's a t-shirt. Listen, let go, stay the course, okay? Because blessings will really, like, overrun you, for real. Like, run you over. Like, you're trying to just walk, mind your own business, but a blessing will just, whoop, keep on coming, keep on coming. And you wouldn't have had these blessings if you decided to do your own thing and go the other way that you thought wasn't, you know, 
the, the way that was the right way, but it wasn't. So I am just so thankful that you stayed the course. And guys, I just want to say, just to put your business out there, Casey. So I've been to Casey's old house and new house, and I'm so glad you just listened to the Lord because her new house, guys, I don't think she really knows this, well, she probably does, but it has every single thing that she wanted in it a does. house that she was looking for and more and she was able to have a brand new porch installed she has a brand new deck that's huge installed she has a nice hair i'm telling you party at casey's i'm trying, I'm trying to tell you be why you're old bring your own food because casey don't like to cook like, <laughs> bring your own food party at casey's trust me she has doubled like her square footage if if or even more and i've seen the houses that you were trying to settle for and that guy was saying, nah, you were like, I just want to go ahead and do it. And they weren't as good as this house. So I'm so happy that you listened because God knows what we really want. You know, he knows yeah. what we want and he knows the desires of our hearts. So when we listen to him, he's able to bless us the way that, you know, we need desires, to be blessed yeah. and want to be blessed and not what we think we want. You know, he knows best. So I just want to thank you so much for sharing that with us. That was so encouraging. You know, even though you may have struggles in life, you know, God has your back. He knows what's going on. Just listen to him and stay the course. So thank you so much, Casey. It's still wasn't that bad, was it? Nah, yes, it wasn't the, ugly, the ugly crowd was pretty bad. The ugly crowd oh, was no, it was the best part. The, the best, best part. <laughs> and you know, someone, I'm sure someone's going to just going to just take that clip out. Don't do that. And, and be a meme. I'm going to be a meme. <laughs> Lord, have mercy, Jesus. <laughs> It's all good because it's to the glory and honor of God. We, we bless God for that. And to our audience, I pray that you have gotten the message that Casey has brought to us. Stay the course. And I know we want to de make a detour. We want to throw in the towel. We want to make plans of, of our own. But God said no. But if that wasn't in the plan, your plan is not in the plan. Go back yeah. to what God says. Remember awesome. the last thing he said and take it from there. Keep rolling with it. He's got a blessing on the other side of your, uh, your experience. When you stay on the course, that blessing is waiting right. Come, come, come a little bit farther, a little bit yeah, more. Yeah. You can do this. You can do this. And when you get there, those um, the cry that Casey just did, <laughs> it'll be on your face anywho yeah. we're grateful to god for this we're grateful to god for this opportunity to share the blessings of the lord i know without a doubt that message has been a blessing to someone and i pray that you stay the course yes just know that you can go back and replay this on our youtube channel and when you do, please subscribe so that you will be a part of this team to take the message across the world in, in another country. And we bless God for that as well. Every time God does something great, we give him praise, we give him glory, and we give him the honor for the same. Thank you for joining us on this platform, Project 365. We shall see you again on tomorrow. And I always ask my co-host, at what time, Takira? 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye, Casey.